China has slowly become one of Bangladesh's biggest partners in trade and in business. Data from the China Global Investment Tracker shows that China has invested a massive 7.07 billion US dollars from 2018 to 2022 into Bangladesh. They have also been directly involved in construction projects worth over 16 billion dollars. These are no mere small figures. Bangladesh is still a developing nation, and for every billion dollar invested into the country, the benefits will inevitably be big. Some people, however, have voiced opposition about this. They came from local politicians to international bodies. They stated that Bangladesh is slowly becoming indebted to China. A lot of Chinese investments into the country, after all, have been in the form of debt. There is lots of data backing this statement. A data shows that Bangladesh has over $17.1 billion in debt exposure to China. Another Another source, which is the World Bank's International Debt Report 2023, showed that Bangladesh's total debt to China amounts to $6.05 billion. Now, while it is smaller than the previous source, this is still big. Now, we are not saying that China's debts to Bangladesh are bad. If it helps improve the economy, then of course they should borrow more money. On the other hand, if the exact opposite happens, if Bangladesh may actually get into trouble due to China's debt or even debt in general, then this is certainly going to be bad. To understand just how important or how bad China's investments into Bangladesh are, it is important to understand what type of investments they are getting, where is it going, and what the conditions are. Let's first understand what type of investments they are getting. The infamous China scheme has always been the Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI. China has promoted the BRI as an aim to enhance global trade and stimulate economic growth across Asia and beyond by building infrastructure and broadening trade links between Asia, Africa, and Europe. But the BRI has also been mired with controversy. You see, there are concerns about the transparency of the BRI project. Some projects lack clear public information about their terms of conditions. There are also problems with who controls the project. If the projects are controlled by Chinese companies, then this can lead to economic dependence. And finally, the most controversial issue is about the environment environmental impact of these projects. So, are these controversies seen in Bangladesh projects? Well, the projects seen in Bangladesh are indeed part of the BRI. These are the most evident investments seen in Bangladesh. For instance, in 2016, Bangladesh entered into agreements for eight significant projects, totaling over $9.45 billion in financing from China. These projects are the Padma Bridge Rail Link, valued at $3.3 billion, and aims to establish a shorter rail connection between Dhaka and the central and southwestern regions, including the port of Pera. Then there is also the Pera 320MW coal-powered thermal power plant, valued at $1.56 billion and aims to address the country's energy needs. Then the development of National ICT Infra Network for the Bangladesh government, valued at $1 billion, aimed at enhancing the country's information and communication technology infrastructure. These, and a few more, are good examples examples of BRI projects. An official BRI social media account then highlighted the strategic importance of the 169-kilometer-long Padma Bridge Rail Link project. They stated that the Padma Bridge Rail Link project in Bangladesh is one of the most significant BRI projects constructed by the China Railway Group Limited. But beyond BRI projects, there are also other ways China has invested into Bangladesh. There are now joint ventures between Chinese companies and Bangladesh companies. There are also investments made from Chinese companies directly into Bangladesh. Foreign direct investments FDI, bring in capital, technology management know-how, and access to international markets in a nation. They are essential for any country globally. Everyone from the biggest economy such as the United States to the smallest financial hub such as Singapore are always vying for FDI. Historically, the largest FDI inflows by country has been the United States. The total FDI stock, which is an indicator which indicates the cumulative value of foreign investments held in the country, has the U.S. in the top spot. The total FDI stock until 2019 shows that the U.S. has over $3.5 billion, followed by the United Kingdom at $2.3 billion, then the Netherlands at $1.3 billion, and finally Singapore at $1.2 billion. Not that much, which makes it easy for China to take the top spot in 
just a few years. Between 2016 and 2022, China's government-run and private enterprises made close to $26 billion in investments in Bangladesh, with investments exceeding $1 billion in 2022, a rise of 30% from a value of $700 million in 2021. This made China the single largest source of FDI by nation in Bangladesh. Furthermore, the Bangladesh Investment Development Authority even stated that more than 65% of FDI in both of these years also came from China. Then, besides FDI, one should also not forget about trade. By importing from China, Bangladesh acquires a variety of goods, ranging from machinery and electronics to raw materials and consumer products. These imports are essential for supporting Bangladesh's growing industrial base, improving productivity, and meeting consumer demands. Chinese goods, often more affordable due to economies of scale, help keep costs down for Bangladeshi businesses and consumers. On the other side, exporting to China enables Bangladesh to sell its goods, such as textiles, apparel, seafood, and agricultural products. This not only earns foreign exchange but also creates jobs and stimulates economic activities within the country. The Chinese market, with its vast consumer base, offers substantial opportunities for Bangladeshi exporters to expand their market reach and increase revenue. How big is the trade between the two? Well, it's massive. Data from 2009 to 2010 showed that their total bilateral trade accounted for $3.3 billion. But a decade later, from 2021 to 2022, this ballooned to over $20 billion. Don't forget also that this is just for one single year. Let's now discuss the problems related to these investments and try to understand whether they will actually be bad for Bangladesh or not. Now, we mentioned earlier that one of the biggest problems pertaining to Chinese debts is that they are not publicly available. Nobody really knows what these investments are. Its conditions are important as it allows the public, like you and me, to criticize the government and make sure that they take responsibility for whatever they are doing. Yet, a data said that Bangladesh has no hidden debt to China. For clarification of sources, Aid Data is an international development research lab located in the United States. They investigate data poor environments and come up with better evidence for them. Aid Data has numerous available data exposing hidden Chinese debts all around the world. That just means that if Aid Data, an internationally renowned institution, says that there is no hidden debt, then we can close this one problem for Bangladesh. This effective debt management should then set Bangladesh apart from countries like Pakistan or Argentina, which have faced significant debt distress. Secondly, we also got to talk about whether Bangladesh's debt is sustainable. It's not just their debt to China that we got to take into account for. It's Bangladesh's overall debt. In 2023, the total national debt of Bangladesh amounts to about $161 billion. In comparison, the country's growth most domestic product, which is its economy, is about $446 billion, according to the International Monetary Fund. The IMF also shows that the gross debt position of Bangladesh stands at only 39.79% for 2023, which is incredibly low. India, for instance, has a gross debt position as a percentage of GDP over 82.75%, more than double than that of Bangladesh. While the data does show that Bangladesh may seem to be in a rather safer position, there are still some critics and doubters out there. After all, their concerns have good backing. One of their concerns was back in 2022 when the IMF provided Bangladesh over $4.5 billion of rescue packages in the form of loans. Some experts and economists pointed out the reason for this. They said that it's because of the drop in exports and the increase in global problems which led to a rise in oil prices. This led to severe energy problems in Bangladesh. To give you a clue of what this looks like, in 2016, the external debt to export export ratio in Bangladesh amounted to just 56.3%. But a few years later, in 2023, this jumped to over 116.6%. Furthermore, in 2016, the country's external debt outstanding was only 26.3 billion, but by 2023, this rose to over 62 billion. Whew, okay. 
But regardless of these, the IMF's Debt Sustainability Report of November 2023 said that Bangladesh's external debt remains manageable. However, the rise of China's debt to Bangladesh's overall external debt could have contributed to some of the issues in recent years. Now, it is clear that Bangladesh's debt has become a problem, but it is also clear that Bangladesh is in need of a lot of foreign investments. As long as Bangladesh manages its relations with Chinese debt, then there will be no problem. But if they don't push out active management properly, then changes will be necessary. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.